Hello everyone, this is Raw Matt, and I present to you now, The Jason Theory. Brought to you by none other than faithful, honest, and true himself, Jason Azard. I was going to say, you, you, that if they're trying to connect these somehow, that you were, what you were explaining there, that that, that doesn't work. So there, I guess there's uh, dilemmas and issues within all that. Right, exactly. The anatomical data that they have doesn't match the molecular data. They contradict each other. So that's why they like to use the fossil record because it's inference. They don't have any molecular data. They can just line bones up on the table like Bill Ludlow used to do and say, look, isn't that great? You can line them up and you can see which one evolved into which. Why? Because you lined up small to large. We can do that with infants to adults. That doesn't mean anything. It's, just, it's the same thing. A matter of fact, Jason showed me an incredible series of skulls lined up that shows a baby primate and an adult primate, and they look totally different. Yeah. Oh, it, that was the orangutan. The orangutan baby skull looks very human-like. As a matter of fact, it looks a lot like um, some of those hominids, hominid skulls. I believe I'm, I'm developing a theory that, that some of these hominid skulls where they call them different genus and different types. Well, they, there was one place in, I can't remember, Germany, I think it was, where they found a whole lot of what, they, what they're pretty sure is Homo erectus mixed in with a whole lot of different skulls from supposedly different times that are so, supposed to be so far apart from each other, just mixed in with each other. Because we know things grew bigger in the past, right? So I'm thinking some of these skulls that they've got are not actually what they say they are. They're the same genus, but maybe a young whatever. I don't know, maybe a young ape of some type. Or, but all I know is, is when you look at an orangutan, a full grown orangutan skull, and then a, then an infant orangutan skull, you, you'll be really surprised because their face isn't grown out, pushed right out yet. When they're at infant stage, their muzzle is right, right back in close to the face, like it looks like some of the hominid skulls that I've seen. And I looked at that skull and I thought, man, I'd love to get those hominid skulls and I am going to do this. I'll get screenshots and put them together to see if they look, you know, similar sort of thing. So, awesome. yeah, I, I think it's possible that, that maybe that some of these things that they think a thing might just be something, you know, completely different or a baby ape or something like that. You're right, Jason. Scientists are even starting to suspect the same thing in dinosaurs as well. Some dinosaurs, they have said, are different genus altogether, are actually just young dinosaurs of the same species, like the Nanotyrannosaurus, which is probably just a young Tyrannosaurus rex. I mean, look at it. Scientists have long debated about the location from which humans had come. In fact, experts had once broadly agreed that the first Homo sapiens appeared somewhere on the African continent and then spread out across the globe. This idea actually began to take hold in 1871 when Charles Darwin suggested that Africa was the cradle of human life. Writing in The Descent of Man, Darwin pointed toward the fact that gorillas and chimpanzees, two of mankind's closest relatives, still lived on the continent during his own time. And from this, he then reasoned that it could also have been where Homo sapiens first emerged. When the remains of other Homo species were found around Europe and Asia, however, Darwin's ideas were dismissed. Then in 1924, something incredible was discovered. The fossilized skull of a boy thought to have died more than two million years before. Dubbed the Tong Child, the skull was evidently identified as belonging to Australopithecus africanus, a supposed early forebear to modern humans. Then over time, excavations in the area revealed more fossils similar to those of the Tong Child. And eventually, the scientific community came to accept that the first humans had likely merged on the African continent, just as Darwin had suggested. For years then, this theory of human evolution remained dominant around the world. Thousands of miles away, however, a team of archaeologists in Israel stumbled across something that could change that narrative for good. Back in 2001, you see, Professor Mina Weinstein Evron from Israel's University of Haifa and Professor Israel Hershkovitz from Tel Aviv University joined forces, and together they set out to work on an ambitious excavation. Dubbed the Mizlia Cave Project, the dig aimed to excavate a site high up on Mount Carmel in northern Israel. Many experts believe that this region was settled in Paleolithic times, 
which span roughly between 17,000 and 2.6 million years ago. And in Mislia Cave itself, archaeologists had in fact found layers of history dating as far back as 400,000 years. Archaeologists also believe that early humans had once populated Mislia. In fact, experts had previously determined that the area had been inhabited between 250,000 and 160,000 years in the past. Dating procedures performed on early pieces of flint had suggested this time frame, which would see it fall under the early Middle Paleolithic period. So at Mislia, Weinstein, Avron, and Hershkovitz hoped to find the holy grail of paleoanthropology, evidence that would shed light on the origins of Homo sapiens. Nothing, however, could have prepared them for what they actually uncovered. As Weinstein Evron put it to the Times of Israel in 2018, we found something even more surprising. To offer a bit of context, archaeologists have been excavating the region around Mislia for 10 or so years, and slowly they began to build up a fascinating picture of ancient life in the mountains of Israel. For example, a team uncovered a huge cache of some 60,000 tools, shedding light on how early humans had lived and worked. Forged from flint, the tools actually represent a number of different stages of human development. So while the archaeologists found primitive axes among the relics, they also uncovered more advanced pieces, such as knives and projectiles. The experts also discovered evidence of how the tools had once been used. The new zoological data from Mislia Cave, particularly the abundance of meat-bearing limb bones, displaying filleted cut marks and the acquisition of prime-age prey demonstrate that early Middle Paleolithic people possessed developed hunting capabilities, researchers reported in a 2007 article for the Journal on Human Evolution. Archaeologists also discovered a vast array of animal remains at the site. They had a delicatessen in the cave, Weinstein Avron quipped to the Times of Israel. In fact, she noted that the remains of meat from creatures such as auroch, wild boar, and hare, not to mention ostrich eggs, were all present. They supped on ham and eggs, she continued, and that wasn't all. At Mislia, archaeologists further uncovered potentially the first evidence of upholstery. This was in the form of padding that had lined seats surrounding the cave's hearth. The most exciting discovery was, however, that of a jawbone. The bone had been dug up from the earth in 2002. Apparently, a freshman student had uncovered the jawbone the first time he'd attended one of the group's digs. Buried in what's known as petrified soil, the fossil had then been carefully taken from the cave and sent to a laboratory. There the painstaking task of removing layers of sediment from the find began. It's a frustrating process that takes a lot of time, Hershkovitz explained to the Times of Israel. It must be done step by step in order not to damage the fossil. It took about a year just to clean it up and prepare it for study. Eventually though, the discovery was revealed in all its glory and the archaeologists were amazed by what they'd found. To their surprise, the fossilized jawbone actually appeared to be that of a modern human. However, there were some problems with this conclusion. Apparently, you see, the fossil had been found within layers believed to date to the early Middle Paleolithic period, specifically between 250,000 and 140,000 years ago. So given that, the team felt that they could confidently assume that the fossil was more than 120,000 years old. Up until then, however, the earliest evidence of Homo sapiens outside of Africa was recognized as having originated between 90,000 and 120,000 years ago. There had also been supporting finds at a different site around 30 miles away at Mount Precipice near Nazareth. Yet the team still found it difficult to convince others of the legitimacy of their incredible discovery. It looked so modern that it took us five years to convince people because they couldn't believe their eyes, Weinstein Evron told the New York Times in 2008. So the team embarked upon a quest to secure a concrete date for their find. To access this data, one of the first steps was to send the fossil to the University of Vienna. This is where paleoanthropologist Gerhard W. Weber runs a virtual laboratory. In his laboratory, Weber produced a 3D model of the fossil, allowing him to see its features in greater detail. He was also able to virtually strip away the teeth's outer layers, and with that data he compared the jawbone to other Homo sapien remains, as well as examples from additional Homo species. And eventually Weber concluded that the jawbone's characteristics matched those of Homo sapiens. It's not a little bit modern, or on the border of being modern, he told the New York Times, 
it's a really modern human. 